In this video, we're going to look at one of the most memorable sequences ever captured, the Pulp Fiction dance scene. How did Tarantino turn an unexpected twist contest in the middle of a gangster film into one of the most iconic movie moments? In a film filled with classic scenes... I love you, honey bunny. Oh, yeah, I'll with you. Sam's dead, baby. He's cold. Watch. Does he look like a <laughs> What? <laughs> We're going to use Studio Binder's pre-production software to put us in Tarantino's dancing shoes. So, why is this scene so important? What's going on under the surface? Vincent and Jules are gangster henchmen on their way to settle some business for their boss, Marcellus. Help me up there. Three or four. Jules tells Vincent a tragic story about an associate who got a little too familiar with their boss's wife. Well, Marcellus fucked him up good. Word around the campfire is it was on account of Marcellus Wallace's wife. Then what did Marcellus do? Sent a couple of cats over to his place. They took him out on his patio, threw his ass over the balcony. Fell false stories. Then Vincent reveals his next assignment. What's her name again? Mia. Mia. Why are you so interested in Big Man's wife? Well, he's going out of town in Florida and he asked me if I'd take care of her while he's gone. Take care of her? No, man. Just take her out, you know. Show her a good time, make sure she don't get lonely. Good. Immediately a question is born. Will Vincent slip up with the boss's wife and meet a similar fate? A massive amount of nervous expectation has been established. You see, this is a moral test of oneself, whether or not you can maintain loyalty. The success or failure of this night means life or death for Vincent. With our story beat isolated, let's look at the directorial choices Tarantino made in the Pulp Fiction dance scene to elevate this tension. This is Jack Rabbit Slims, and Elvis Man should love it. Come on, man, let's go get a steak. You can get a steak here, Daddy-o. Don't be a... Oh, after you, kitty cat. The design of Jack Rabbit Slims is bursting with nostalgia. A long tracking shot allows Vincent and us to absorb the kitschy atmosphere. Yeah. All right. The movie posters lining the walls, a Ricky Nelson impersonator, the booths made from cut up vintage cars, and servers dressed as Marilyn Monroe, Come on, Let's and James Dean. All of this is designed to evoke an innocent bygone America. In any other movie, this scene would be the perfect date for young lovers. By setting this scene in this location, we've created an even more difficult obstacle for this character. Hi, I'm Buddy. What can I get you? Did you just order a five dollar shake? Mm-hmm. That's a shake. That's milk and ice cream. Last I heard. That's five dollars. You don't put bourbon in or nothing? No. Just checking. After they've ordered, let's use medium close-ups and off-center framing. Mia sits camera left, with her eye line also camera left, leaving the other half of the frame empty. Vincent sits in a similar composition, more towards camera right, with his eye line also camera right. Traditional composition rules would say that their position and eye lines would help fill the empty space. By not following the rules, we can make the conversation imbalanced and uncomfortable. But when they eventually do warm up to each other... Yummy. You think I can have a sip of that? We can bring them both into mostly centered framed close-ups. Be my guest. I gotta know what a five dollar shake tastes like. You can use my straw, I don't have cooties. Yeah, but maybe I do. Cooties I can handle. All right. The intimate shots match the flirtatious tone of the conversation and intensify the looming danger of the situation. He's not supposed to let his guard down because the stakes are high. God damn, it's a pretty good milkshake. Told you. I don't know if it's worth $5, but it's pretty 
looking good. We can cut to neutral profile shots during the uncomfortable silence as both characters are unsure of how to proceed. Profile shots like these are often used for confrontational scenes. I have so much strength in me, you have no idea. Are you listening to me? Yes, I am! In this case, we wait to see who will break the awkward silence. Don't you hate that? Hate what? Uncomfortable silences. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and powder my nose. You sit here and think of something to say. I'll do that. We can cut to a kind of POV as Mia slowly struts away. We'll hold on this shot to signify a long gaze from Vincent. A tiny clue that Mia's charms are working and Vincent seems to be struggling. The more Vincent lets his guard down, the more nervous we are for him. So far, we've mostly seen them in singles. Then, Ed Sullivan makes an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, now the moment you've all been waiting for, the world famous Jack Rabbit Slim's Twist Contest. Our first contestants. Right here. Want to dance? No, 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 no. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. And now I want to dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. Right. So dance good. All right. As the dance contest begins, a wide shot puts our character center stage with the crowd watching. A slight push-in will remind us that all eyes are on them, elevating expectations a bit more. When Mia and Vincent dance, it's not just any dance, they do the twist. Come on, baby. The twist was an immensely popular dance in the 1960s. However, it drew criticism at the time for being too provocative. This is another element that Tarantino uses to push Mia and Vincent deeper into flirtatious and therefore dangerous territory. For the music, Tarantino picked You Never Can Tell by Chuck Berry. It was a teenage wedding and the old folks wished them well. In which the lyrics describe a teenage wedding, a souped up cherry red 53 jitney evoking a naive romance. And yet another element that pushes this scene in a direction that will end badly for Vincent. Unlike a typical dance scene with multiple edits and angles, let's keep the coverage minimal with longer takes. We'll keep the camera locked in on these characters as much as they are locked in on each other. Then, a pair of handheld shots that switch between them. Vincent's eyeline motivates a pan over to Mia, who looks back to meet his gaze, pulling him closer to her. This will help us focus on Mia and Vincent's intense eye contact and will escalate the tension between them. Even their dancing becomes in sync. He matches her doing the swim. And then she matches him doing the Batman. It is clear that a kinship is growing. Despite all the flirty quips at the booth, the real conversation happens here. And much to our dismay, Vincent has dropped his guard almost entirely. His chances of making a life or death mistake hit an all-time high. Tarantino couldn't have known it at the time, but the Pulp Fiction dance scene cemented Mia and Vincent as pop culture icons. As unforgettable as this postmodern classic is, it was still put together the way anyone puts a scene together. Shot by shot by shot. If you're ready to design your next project, Studio Binder can get you started. 
you'll find even more resources on the Studio Binder blog. We've set the stage. Now it's time to put on your dancing shoes. Hit subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? No, that's it. I'm finished. See you in the next one.